Inshallah, tonight we will resume the tafsir of Surah Al-Infitar from verse number 6. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim, bismillahi r-rahman r-rahim. Ya ayyuhal insan ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Translation. O men, what has made you careless concerning your Lord, the most generous? My noble audience to really appreciate the richness of this ayat we have to reconnect with the previous set of verses of surah al-infitar in the opening of this surah allah speaks about the different episodes that will take place that basically will announce the destruction of this world if humanity and all forces were to come together to replicate such a disaster, they can't. If anyone was to come together and they were to replicate what Allah has made mention of in the opening verses of Surah Al-Infitar, it is improbable. It is not a possibility. So basically Allah Almighty in a very subtle manner is informing us of His power. That it is Allah who is the one that can destroy this entire universe. And basically He has the right to destroy it because He is the one that created it. And if a person was to focus upon that alone, he will realize the greatness of the creator and that creator that can create and destroy the entire model instantly he deserves to be recognized he deserves to be obeyed and he is the only one that should be worshipped and that's why when we say la ilaha illallah one of the fine translations is la ma'buda illallah that there is none worthy of worship but Allah Almighty. Now in verse number 6, Allah Almighty says that what has taken a person away from his Creator? He has developed a relationship with his Creator and he knows that I exist because of my Creator. I breathe because of my Creator. I enjoy because of my Creator. Everything that I am is because of Allah. Yet, that same human being that acknowledges that his existence is because of Allah Almighty, that same human being lives a life that is not pleasing to the Creator. So Allah Almighty in a very unique style in verse number 6 says that what has taken you away from your Creator? <laughs> How can you drift away knowing that you came from non-existence into existence because of Allah. And you are breathing, inhaling, exhaling because of Allah. How can you drift away? But the Quran is a kalam of Allah. It is a speech of Allah. And basically, the speech of Allah has been adorned with the language Arabic. The kalam of Allah is not in Arabic. This is an academic study of scholars. It's a technical topic that the speech of Allah was not Arabic, but the speech of Allah was adorned with the language of Arabic. And in this ayah, Allah Almighty makes mention of the behavior of the human being, and at the same time, in a very unique manner, makes mention the reason why this person drifts away, knowing that Allah is his creator. And that diagnosis is in the word al kareem and kareem means the one that is graceful that pardons that lets you go basically when a person drifts from the creator knowing that the creator allah almighty is responsible for this entire universe and he is not punished immediately 
And the reason why he is not punished and reprimanded immediately because Allah is al kareem A person thinks he can get away with murder. And he keeps following this sinister path. But there is a qanun that we will come across, a law, an injunction that we will come across in Surah Al-Buruj where Allah Almighty says, Inna batsha rabbika lashaheed. That really the season of Allah is very severe. Indeed, Allah gives ample opportunity to a person to redeem and to return to his creator. Inna ila rabbika ruja'a. Allah ki taraf ta'yuki ke aja. Allah gives ample opportunity. But if the person does not, and he has drifted away from the core, then Allah seizes that person. Now, al karim is the reason why people are oblivious to the might of Allah, oblivious to the consequences of the actions that they are committing their body to. Now, basically, the message for us is that if we're getting away with something that we're doing wrong, it is not because we are very smart and we are able, but it is because Allah is al -Kari. But Allah has many other attributive names. Don't allow that attributive name of Allah to come into manifestation because if that comes into manifestation, then a person will be in severe, severe problem. Does it make sense? No. Next verse. Now in the next set of verses, Allah introduces himself. And basically Allah has many, many attributes. One of the attributes of Allah is that he is Al-Khaliq. He is the creator. And he has created everything with his creative hand. Yeah? So let's say Allah has created this entire universe with his cosmic statement, Kun, and everything comes into existence. But there are certain things that Allah has created with his creative hand that we will make mention, inshallah, in Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. He has created the qalam with his hand, with his creative hand. He has created the, the Garden of Eden with his creative hand. He has created Adam with his creative hand. But you and me and this entire universe that is our host right now in which we live and reside has been created by the statement of Allah, Kun Fayakun. Allah Almighty says in Surah Yaseen, Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yakoola lahu kun fayakun. When Allah wills or intends to do something, to bring something from non-existence to into existence, it is a matter of kun and it happens. Now, everything, kulillahu khaliku kulli shay. Kulillahu khaliku kulli shay. Allah Almighty Himself introducing you and me to Him. And He's saying that you should know, O Nabi of Allah, introduce humanity to the khalik, that He is the one that has created everything. Tangible, non-tangible, visible, invisible, something in the darkness of the night or something in the light of the day, everything that revolves around us, that has perished, that has not come into existence yet, everything has been created by Allah Almighty. But out of all that He has created, the masterpiece is the human being. He has created so much. He has created the angels. That, are, that have been created from light, that are infallible. He has created the jinnat that are many, many more times more than us in number. He has created the fish in the ocean. My Sheikh Mufti Tatu Usmani Sahib, he said that once uh, he went to a, uh, an island and uh, they, the host said that we will take you into a submarine. And he said that uh, that submarine opened up maybe five or six years ago. So before that, people were not familiar with submarine. So they got this submarine, they bought this submarine, purchased it. And then there was a tour guide that used to take them through the island underwater. And he said that I was sitting in the submarine and I came across fish. 
that was so, so beautiful. And I had never ever seen colors of that kind. And then when the ride was over, I contemplated. Because Allah Almighty says, Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ard wa akhtilafi al-layl wa al-nahar la ayatin li ulil al-baal. We are people that reflect and contemplate. We enjoy the scene that Allah has created because He has created it for us. But we have to draw a lesson from it. And that's why in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Surah number 23, after speaking about the different stages that the fetus passes through in the mother's womb, Allah Almighty says, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ after speaking about the different stages that the fetus passes through to reach that masterpiece in the mother's womb, Allah says, Allahu ahsan al Blessed is Allah, the best of creators. So Mufti Taqi Usmani Sa'abdamad Barakatu, he says that when we came out and the ride was over, I sat down and I contemplated. I said for centuries, from the time Allah created this island, these fish, was swimming in the waters. But no eye had seen them because they were so low in the water. Just five years ago, people were introduced to the beauty of these fish. And then he said, I thought, why? Such beauty is hidden. Such beauty is hidden. Maybe no human being five years before had seen these fish. And he said that I realize the khaliqiyat of my Allah. That even if no one is going to see these fish, it is the khaliqiyat of Allah to create something that is beautiful. He can't create something that is dull. And Allah knew that in future to come, people will create vessels that will allow them to travel at the depth of the ocean. And if they come across a fish that is dull and boring, there's a blemish on the khaliqiyat of Allah. So Allah created these fish many, many centuries ago that no person could witness, but now they're witnessing it and they are marveled and mesmerized and perturbed. But in spite of all this that he has created, the masterpiece is the human being. There is no one that is greater in beauty than a human being. There is no one greater that has been endowed with faculties and abilities greater than a human being. The human being is the masterpiece. And because he is the masterpiece, Allah has chosen the human being to receive his kalam and to practice it and relate it. Now Allah speaks about us and the faculties, the abilities that he has blessed us with. Now listen to how Allah speaks about us. And once basically the message is that when we realize who we are and who brought us to this perfect model, we should thank him for that. Not only through speech, but by practice as well. Al-Abd, Abdul Ihsan. Abd is the one that is a slave to the benefactor. Now what does Allah Almighty say? الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَسَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَ Who created you, fashioned you perfectly and gave you due proportion. فِي أَيِّ سُورَةٍ مَا شَاءَ رَكَّبَكَ In whatever form He willed, He put you together. وَالَّذِي يُسَوِّرُكُمْ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءَ Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, verse number 6. Allah says, He shaped you in whichever design He wanted. Think about the storage of eyes that are given each day to the children that come into this world. What a storage. How many different set of eyes? How many different colors? How many kidneys each day? But you know what I marvel at? You and me, we share the same features. One nose with two nostrils, two eyes, two ears. One mouth, one face, one chest, two arms, two hands, and we are all different. We are all different. This is the khaliqiyat of Allah. 
Right now, there's seven billion people and no one is identical. And they share the same features. And what is greater is that the machine that is running inside, it is so complex. I have met, been here for the last 20 years, I know many, many doctors that have attained uh, high status in their field. And they will say that we only know one tenth of that body part that I have spent the last 40 years studying. If there's a brain surgeon, he will say, I only know one tenth of the brain. And he said that this is an overstatement. I don't even know one tenth. It is so complex. Mufti Junaid, my brother, Brother Isad is he's a witness as well. My brother Mufti Junaid, he had a baby, the third baby. He had a condition. There was one piece in the body that was not functional. One piece. My brother in Poland, one piece was not functional. Allahu Akbar. So this child was in hospital for about six months. And we went there and this was a special unit. It was a special unit of all those children that have rare conditions, rare sicknesses. One or half a body part is not functioning. We found one child that this child for the rest of his life could not eat anything solid. The only thing that this child was going to eat for the rest of his life was milk. Nothing else. And the mother has passed through that as well. She only drank milk. Nothing else. My brother, he's going to Pakistan now in two or three weeks. I'm just sharing this, that how blessed we are. And to take this child across to Pakistan, they have to take two suitcases of medicine. So he can survive there for four weeks. Two suitcases. And we have that body part functioning well in our body and we do not even realize. It's actually one, one small uh, instrument in the body. If it is not functioning, Allah Akbar. There were certain people in that ward, I have witnessed those children are like angels. One child could not hear. That's it, finished. Couldn't hear. The father couldn't hear. The, the mother couldn't hear. They didn't have that faculty. There was another child, like I said, that could only drink milk. That's it, for the rest of their life. They had no taste buds. It's ugly. So complex. You know, you see a chicken, the egg hatches, chicken comes out, and straight away, it walks behind the mother. It recognizes its enemy and recognizes its friends. And it starts to live its life. We are, the, we are so complicated. When the child is born for two years, it is dependent upon the parents. Can't move. We do not know who our friend is, we do not know who our foe is. And we defecate and urine, urinate. And Allah has placed love in the parents that they come and they address all our problems by just the mere cry of the child for two years. The supreme species, the most complex and the most difficult to bring up. But Allah has made arrangements that we reach perfection. But when we reach perfection, then the word comes across. And this word has the stench of ego, Anna, me. He forgets his own. We made all that arrangement to keep him for two years and place that love. You know, you can be the most merciful person and you may have the best heart, but if it isn't your child, you can't take care of him. Allah puts that love there because Allah knows the child needs it. And then he gives us this beautiful face. Think about if the nose was on the left or on the right. This beautiful model. Now we see these bottles, beautiful bodies, beautiful face. Just think that if the eye was half an inch upwards or half an inch down, the entire beauty is destroyed. So Allah has created this perfection. And that's what Allah says, 
He has created you in the shape that He wants, that we deserve. But this is only the starting of our perfection. The perfection is going to reach a very high level if we make the right choices right now in the immortal world. Now Allah Almighty says, Allah created us, Allah gave us that perfect body and endowed us with faculties and abilities. And then Allah says, Nay, but you deny the recompense. The one, the being that brought us from the sperm drop, meeting the egg, and then allowed it to pass all these different stages, and then made thumma sabila yassara, made our entry into this world easy, and then placed love in the heart of the mother and the father, and then they took care us care of us for two years, and Allah placed two rivers of milk for us in the breast of the mother and she takes care of us and then we find that from that weak state we arrive at a medium state and then from that medium station we arrive at the optimum station where we are very strong and we're taking care of a child that has just arrived into this world but then we find a decline we find a decline Straight after 40, we find that the health is deteriorating, the faculties are becoming weak, the abilities cannot be used. So this change, this change from weakness to strength to weakness gives us a good understanding that the journey is not over. From this weakness, we can rise once again to strength and reach the height of the mountain from where we will never ever decline. And that is the day of judgment and attaining success. And Allah says, Nay, but you deny the recompense. You think that this rise and this roller coaster, I call it a roller coaster, is just created for no reason? This roller coaster has a great, great significance. It is this journey up and down and up and down and up and down and then death and then through death and then alim e barzakh and then alim e akhra is for maliki yawm e deen it is to stand in front of Allah for retribution for reward now the very airtight seal tight system of Allah airtight system of Allah wa inna alaykum la hafizin wa inna alaykum la hafizin but verily over you are appointed hafizi, watchers, kiram and katibi. Who are these noble writers? Ya'lamuna ma taf'alun. They know all that you do. And that's what Allah is saying. Let's go back. Let's retreat. Let's go to verse number six. People drift away from the Creator. Why? Allah is kareem. Now Allah Almighty, after speaking about how we have come into existence and the perfect model that Allah has created. Allah says that keep in mind that there is a group of malaika that have been appointed and deputed by him that are observing, writing everything that you say and everything that you do. And they are noble. And anyone that is noble does not lie. So they don't cheat. They don't lie. They, are, they do not fabricate. They do not distort. There is no addition. There is no omission. Everything is precise. Everything is precise. And I made mention in the past, I think in Surah al -Nabha, even the intention they know of. Now they cannot evaluate the intention the intention because it's something that is not tangible but the nabi of allah said ra'ihatun tayyibatun wa ra'ihatun karihatun that if the intention is good there is a good fragrance and if the intention is bad there's a bad fragrance there's a stench and they'll write down good intention they'll write down bad intention and Allah Almighty knows the intensity, the volume, the strength of the good intention, and He knows the intensity of the bad intention. And based upon that, the a'mal of a person will multiply or they will decrease. What a tight system. 
But how honorable and how graceful our Allah is, Al Kareem. That if we do anything that is good, we get 10 rewards. We get 10 virtues immediately. For one action, 10 virtues. You know, nowadays they say that if you, if you make 11% on your business, you're doing pretty good. Right? Nowadays, 11%. And if you speak to one person and he says, look, I'm making 25%, whoa. He's over the moon. One action, starting reward of one action is 10. Man ja'a bil hasan, falahu ashu amthaniya. Now the same law should apply to evil. But Allah does not allow the number to increase when it is evil. So one evil, one in the book of deeds. One good deed, the minimum reward is 10. But it can intensify. But you know what is more unique and more graceful? That if a person makes a bad intention, say he has an intention in his mind that tomorrow I'm going to rob the bank. I'm going to rob the bank tomorrow. I'm going to fulfill all my desires and my dreams. And tomorrow, what happens is that there is an increasement in security guards. So from one security guard, for some reason, 10 arrived. So now he can't execute his plan because his plan revolved around one security guard. Now there's 10 security guards. So he makes Toba. He gets reward for that as well. This is an induced Toba. Induced Toba. It is not a sincere Toba, but the environment, the circumstances did not allow him to rob the bank. And where do I get this from? Where do I, I haven't made this up, it's from the hadith. You remember that person in Bani Israel, he was standing and then uh, all the people, the community, the ummah was standing there as well, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. They came to him and they said, it's not raining, so let's go out and uh, you know, ask Allah to forgive us and then he will send the rains. So Allah Almighty says to Musa alayhi salatu salam, there's one person amongst you that has been disobedient to me for the last 40 years. If he stands to the side, I will send the rains. So Hazrat Musa salam, says, look, the person knows who is disobedient. He knows who he is. He should move to the side and Allah will send the rains. Now this person, he realizes it's him. And now he feels very, very shy to step to the side. Because if he steps to the side, everyone's going to know. Just like if somebody breaks his wuzu in salah, he continues. Because he doesn't want to be pointed out that this was the guy who... So he doesn't step, but this is wrong. That's why the Nabi of Allah says, if anything happens, hold your nose and walk outside. Hold your nose and walk outside. Don't stay there. Now you're holding your nose, basically people think that he's bleeding. But something else bled. <laughs> something else bled. But he's bleeding. So there's other ways of moving out. You can go, oh, and walk out. Something like that. Act. So now, where were we? Where were we? So Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, Zakrullah. So this person now is forced to communicate with Allah. If it wasn't for that shyness, he would never ever repent. He was enjoying that life. Now he says, Ya Allah. And he doesn't even utter a word that he hears himself. He's speaking in his mind. In his mind, he's saying, Ya Allah, do not disgrace me. I don't want to step to the side. I reconcile with you. I make you my friend. Accept my tawbah. And he sheds one or two tears and immediately the rains fall. As a Musa looks right, left. No one moved to the side. So now, as a Musa says, Ya Allah, the condition was not met. It was not fulfilled and the rains came down. So Allah said, the, the one that was the obstacle, he became the magnet to the rain. The one that was an obstacle, he became the magnet. So, Ya Allah, inform me who he is. He said, when he was my enemy or he was living a life of evil, I did not expose him. Now he has reconciled with me. How can I expose him? Now, this is the mercy of Allah. He's so graceful. And that's what Allah Almighty is saying, that they are going to be hafizin, kiraman, katibin, writing everything down and nothing is going to be missed out upon. Nothing is going to be missed out upon. I don't remember what I did last year. 
a lot of time people say, Imam Sahib, you gave this talk and it was a story. Can you tell me this story last year? And I said, I forgot, I what story are you talking about? And he would re recount the story and it was like first time for me. He said, we heard this from your mouth. And it's like a first time, I'm hearing the first time, that's an amazing story. He said, Imam Sahib, you told us this story. Memory is not sharp. Everything will be recorded from one. You, I ask you, all of you here, many youngsters, when you read Alif, Ba, Ta, the first time, who was your teacher, where were you sitting? That's only 20 years ago. The youngsters. You read Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, who was that teacher, and where were you sitting? What were you wearing? You don't remember. But these angels have written down everything. Allah. Now Allah Almighty divides humanity into two. All right. In the last verses, Allah divides humanity into two. Inna al-abrar lafi na'im. Allah majalla minhum. Allah make us from the abrar. Really, the abrar will be in delight. Now, abrar is the plural of bar ya bar, bar ya bar. And if you want a complete description of abara i would like you to study the verse when you go back home of surah al-baqarah now surah al-baqarah um, verse number and you can take this as a reference verse number 177 177 laysal birr and now in this lengthy verse Allah Almighty highlights all the sifat of the abarar, all the actions of abarar. So bar basically means righteousness. Now, how does a person become bar, abarar? He needs to adorn himself with certain characteristics. Now, what are those characteristics? Write down, go to verse 177, Surah Baqarah. Allah has highlighted it. لَيْسَ الْبِرْ أَن تُوَلُّوا وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرْ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ Study the verse. Now, Allah Almighty says that the abarar, they are going to be in delight. Naeem, in delight. وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارِ لَفِي جَحِيمِ Fujjar is the plural of Fajr and verily the Fujjar, the wicked will be in blazing fire. Now there are two words that we use for, uh, for a wicked person. One is Fajr and the second is Fajr and Fajr and Fasiq. Fajr and Fasiq. So a kafir is a one that does not obey Allah, believe in Allah. A fajir and a fasik basically can be a person of faith as well. Keep that in mind. So there are two types of Muslims. One is a Muslim that is practicing, you can call him abarar. And then there's a Muslim that is not practicing, you call him fasik or fajir. Or a person that does not believe in Allah, you can call him Fasik and Fajr as well, in terms of his actions, not in terms of his faith. I'd like to say that again. Kafir, the word, if we use it as a disbeliever, it is in terms of his faith. Fajr is in terms of actions. Abarar is in terms of actions. Good actions, Abarar. Bad actions, Fajr and Fasik. And a Muslim can be Fajr and Fasik as well. So if one person is not praying, he's a Muslim of course, he's not praying, you can call him a Fasik, you can call him a Fajr. Does it make sense? Alright. Wa fi jahim. And verily the Fujjar, the wicked, will be in blazing fire. Now what kind of fire? Yaslona, blazing fire. Not only fire, blazing fire. And one of the most powerful descriptions of that fire is in Surah Umazah. Narullahi al-Muqadah al-Ladhi tattali'u ala al-Af'idah. Inshallah, this is not created for us. But just for information, I would like you to depict under this, these ayat of Surah Umazah, I would like you to depict there are columns of fire and people will be placed in those columns. Columns of fire. 
You know, even if there was no fire, to be placed in a column, whoa, that is azab, claustrophobic. Just, it's, it's so, so difficult to remain there. And this is made out of fire. And then this fire is amazing. The characteristic of this fire is that it comes upwards to the heart. Now many a times when people are burning, they die before the entire body burns. But the, the person is not going to die, so the fire is coming upwards and it burns the heart continuously and he feels the sensation and the pain. Allah Allah in which they will enter and taste its burning flame on the day of recompense. Allah And they, meaning the fujjah, the fasik will not be absent therefrom. Meaning that let's say there was a person I made mention of this before that uh, he was uh, cooking something on the barbecue. True story from, from Brisbane, maybe 13, 14 years ago. And somehow his trousers caught fire. Meanwhile, his brother, elder brother, you can go and ask him. His, his trouser caught fire. And he said it burned for about five or six seconds. And he said, that experience, I cannot put words to it. It was so painful. It was so, five, six seconds. So his leg caught fire. And for five or six seconds, he was jumping to the right and the left. But... Eventually, they controlled the fire, subdued it, right? so they controlled the fire. But that pain is in his mind till today. Allah Almighty says, This fire that rises to the heart and captures the heart and a person is still alive. You know, they say, skin a person alive, it's very, very painful. They speak about Pharaoh and they say they used to, they used to skin people alive. Whoa. It's very painful. The fire is coming upwards and the person is alive. He's not dying. And then he's in a column of fire. And you can't escape it. I want you to think about that. Can't escape it. Can't run away from it. Where is he going to run? There is no shelter that will give him relief from this torment. This is the biggest azab. If there was an azab that was temporary and a person could escape it alhamdulillah you can't escape it just like a person is in jannah if he wants to escape it he can't of course no one wants to escape jannah but if he wants to come out he can't come out that's it that's his destination that's why they say the nabi of allah says people in jannah will desire to go back and give their life once again but they can't that's it the rule is you're in jannah you can't leave so there's an entry door and there's no exit door. You go into Jahannam, there's no entry door or Annar. There's, there's an entry door, there's no exit door. Annar, not Jahannam. There's, a, there's an exit door for Jahannam. You know the difference of Jahannam and Annar? Jahannam is that section that is for the Muslim sinners. So there's an entry door and there's an exit door. But Annar, the, the sections, all the other sections that accommodate different kinds of non-believers, there's an entry door, there's no exit. Make sense? This is a big azab, can't escape it. You can't run from it. Now Allah Almighty invites us to use our intellect. Allah is activating our intellect. And what will make you know what the day of recompense is? After all that, what more do you need to prepare for the day of recompense? To believe in the day of recompense? We have spoken about the destruction of this world. We have spoken about your make from inception till the end. You can observe, you can look and you can judge. What else do you need? And then you know there's a, there is a group of angels that are documenting everything that you say and everything that you do and every intention is documented as well what else do you need 
And then Allah says, once again, It's just like the mother saying to the child, child is leaving, going, going abroad, and we have experienced this many times. And the mother says to the child, child, you're going for the first time. If anyone gives you water, don't take the water. Now the child is 21 years old. He says, all right, mother. Then he goes inside and he's packing his bag, he comes out again. The mother says, child, if anyone gives you water, don't take the water. She says, all right, thank you, mother. Tone changes. He goes inside, does a few more things, he comes out. Child, if anyone gives you water, all right, mother. Why is she saying this? Because she knows it's very important. So for Allah to repeat the expression twice, in itself indicates the importance of it. Allah says once, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا If the king says once, get out. Or come in, that's enough. But if the king says, come in, come in. That means he loves. The love is intense. And he says, get out. And he has left and he says, get out again. Ooh, the anger is intense. The importance of Yawmuddin can be understood by these two verses that Allah once says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُدِينَ And again Allah says, ثُمَّ مَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُدِينَ What will make you realize the day of recompense? مَالِكِ يَوْمُدِينَ The master of the day of recompense. يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ The day when no person shall have power. No person will have power. Anything. For, and for another and the decision that day will be with Allah. On that day, Allah Almighty will make a statement. So there are many, many kings nowadays, right? Many, many presidents and prime ministers throughout the world yeah. that fight, play around with the masses, control their minds, give them wrong information so they can secure this kursi. But that day will come that Allah will say, Today, this domain, this dominion, who does it belong to? Who does it belong to? And Allah Himself will say, This dominion, this moment, this time, this theater belongs to Allah, the one, the irresistible. No one else. Allah Almighty said, That day, no one can benefit anyone else. Now, let me just, we got one minute. Let me make mention here that if Allah wills that one person benefit another, that will take place. Ambiya will intercede, awliya will intercede, ulama will intercede, hufaz will intercede, pious people will intercede. But this intercession is granted approval by Allah. Even the Nabi of Allah وسلم, cannot intercede without being granted permission from Allah. And this is what Allah Almighty said, No one will have authority on that day. No angel, no jinn, no insan, no Nabi. But the Nabi of Allah has informed us that the Anbiya, the Awliya, the Shuhada, the Salihin will be granted permission. But prior to receiving this permission, no one will have the uh, permission by Allah Almighty or the uh, the courage to speak in front of Allah or to intercede for any person that they like. Does it make sense? Allah Rabbul Izzah give us tawfiq to be from the Abraham. Allah say guard us from being from the Fujjah. Place yourself in the orchards of A'mal al-Salihah. Remove yourself from the uh, from the bush of A'mal al Yeah. Beautify yourself with the attire of Iman and Akhlaq al